Welcome to this module on radiological anatomy of the lower limb. This module will cover normal and abnormal radiological images related to the lower limb. Let us start with an x-ray of the hip joint. Here we see a normal AP view or anterior posterior view of the pelvis. If we focus on this area of the right hip joint, an x-ray would look like this. Here we see the acetabulum. This is the spherical head of the femur. This is the neck of the femur, the greater trochanter, and then down below the trochanteric region extending into the shaft. We observe a continuous smooth curved line extending from the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus and extending up to the neck of the femur. A similar x-ray of the left side in a young child looks like this. Note the unfused or open epiphyseal plates on the femoral head and neck region and also in the acetabulum. The continuous line extending from the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus to the inferior part of the neck of the femur is also seen in this example. Our first clinical case is of a 72-year-old female patient who had a history of slip and fall and injured her left hip joint. This is the x-ray presented which shows fracture through the intertrochanteric region from the greater trochanter here extending into the lesser trochanter over here. This is an intertrochanteric fracture and usually requires an open reduction and internal fixation. A surgery where the fracture is reduced, brought into as close a possible anatomical position and fixed with metal such as screws and plates. In this instance, a screw is extending through the trochanteric region and up the neck of the femur into the head and a plate is fixed with screws along the shaft of the femur on the lateral side. This clinical case is of a 65-year-old male patient who complains of a pain in the left hip joint for several years, which has gradually been getting worse. The x-ray of this patient, shown here, focuses on the left hip joint, and one notes the reduced joint space between the acetabulum and the femoral head. This is the osteoarthritis of the hip joint, and in advanced stages requires a surgery for total hip joint replacement as seen here where the acetabulum and the femoral head and neck region are replaced with a prosthesis. Our next clinical case is of a 32 year old male who had a history of motor vehicle accident with injury to the right hip area. Here we see the x-ray of the patient and there is an injury on the right side which is called a sec central fracture dislocation. The head of the femur here has pushed through the flora of the acetabulum and is lying within the pelvic cavity. This clinical case is of a 28 year old male patient who was involved in a motor vehicle accident and sustained injury to the pelvic and hip area. The x-ray of this patient is shown here. Note the separation of the pubic symphysis called a pubic diastasis. Also note another injury occurring on the left hip side where the femoral head is sitting outside the acetabular cavity. This is a posterior dislocation of the hip joint and this particular example underscores the fact of looking at the entire x-ray. One mustn't get carried away by making a diagnosis of one injury and forget about the second injury. This clinical case is of a two-year-old female child who presented to the clinic with a history of difficulty in walking. The x-ray of this child is shown here. Note the difference in the appearance of the right hip joint and the left hip joints. The head of the femur represented here on the left side is much larger 
than the head of the femur represented here on the right side. In such cases, we draw two vertical and horizontal lines running through the lateral end of the acetabular cavity and the central cartilaginous portion of the acetabulum cavity to provide us with guides as to the position of the femoral head. On the left side, the femoral head is contained within the lower and inner quadrant, whereas on the right side, the majority of the femoral head is contained in the upper and outer quadrant. This is a condition called as congenital dislocation of hip, or CDH, or also called as developmental dysplasia of the hip, or DDH. A simple screening test done in newborns or young infants can pick up this condition so that it may be treated early on in life. Let us now look at an x-ray of the knee joint in an adult patient. There are two views shown here. The view on the left side is an AP view or an anteroposterior view and the view seen here on the right side is a lateral view of the knee with the knee flexed. One notes the distal end of the shaft of the femur, the condyles the medial condyle on this side and the lateral condyle on this side of the femur. One can see the overlapping shadow of the kneecap or patella, the upper end of the tibia with the tibial plateau, the medial condyle and lateral condyles of the tibia, the head of the fibula, the neck of the fibula and the shaft of the fibula and the shaft of the tibia. Note there is space between the femoral and tibial condyles which is here and here and corresponds to the cartilage and menisci in within the knee joint. The same structures can be seen here in a lateral view with the condyles of the femur, the patella or kneecap, the condyles of the tibia and the head, neck and shaft of the fibula. Let us now look at an x-ray of the knee in a child. Here we have an AP view seen on the left and a lateral view seen on the right. One notes the medial condyle and the lateral condyle of the femur and one sees here the epiphyseal line or the growth plate which is not fused. One sees the tibial plateau with the medial tibial condyle and the lateral tibial condyle here and again the growth plate is visible. Similarly, there's the head, neck, and shaft of the fibula and the shaft of the tibia. These same structures are seen here in the lateral view. One can see clearly the patella or kneecap, the femoral condyles, the tibial condyles, and the fibula here. Here we have a clinical case of a 32-year-old female patient who sustained twisting injury to the right knee while skiing. The x-ray of this patient is shown here. This is the right knee, AP view. One notes the femoral shaft and condyles and the tibial condyles here. But note this structure which is lying here. This is actually the patella which is missing from its normal location and lying laterally. This is a case of patellar dislocation. Here's another clinical case of a 67-year-old female patient who sustained a fender injury to her left knee. Note that the bones are osteoporotic and note that the lateral condyle of the tibia has been crushed and there is a fracture. This is called a tibial plateau fracture. Arthroscopic examination of the knee joint can supplement radiological imaging. In this procedure a small pencil-like instrument is introduced into the joint through small stab incisions. A camera and light source are fitted to allow easy visualization. Structures within the knee joint such as the cartilage and ligaments which are injured in sports injury can be visualized easily. Here is an example of the normal cr anterior cruciate ligament seen arthroscopically. These are the condyles of the femur. Here is an instrument, a probe that is used for tactile examination. On the right we see an example of a torn anterior cruciate ligament where synovial hypertrophy has taken place 
and an attempt by the body to heal it is seen. Total knee replacement is a surgical procedure done in severely damaged knee joints. In this procedure, the femoral and tibial condyles are cut away and capped using metal prosthesis. This shows the metal femoral prosthesis and here is the metallic tibial prosthesis. Silastic spacers are placed in between these two metal components to take the place of menisci. X-rays done on the knee joint after the surgical procedure shows the metal prosthesis in an AP and lateral view. Here is a clinical case of a 22-year-old male who was involved in a motor vehicle accident and sustained injury to his left leg. The x-ray of this patient is shown here. One can see the fracture running through the upper third of the tibia and through the neck of the fibula. This is a fracture of the tibia and fibula which needs fixation, usually done by an open reduction and internal fixation method. As seen here, an intramedullary nail has been placed through the shaft of the tibia with interlocking screws distally and proximally. In such cases, we always correlate anatomy, physiology, and radiology and look for, clinically, structures that may have been damaged based on their anatomical position. Close to the neck of the fimula is the common perineal nerve, which could be damaged, resulting in a drop foot. Here we see x-rays of the ankle joint. We have AP and lateral views. This is a lateral view of the ankle joint, a close-up showing the ankle joint here and the subtalar joints over here. One sees the talus, the calcaneum, the navicular, and the cuneiform bones here, and the cuboid down here. The AP view of the ankle is seen here, where the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus are clearly visible. This is the talus, and this is the true ankle joint. Inferiorly are the subtalar joints. Here is a clinical case of a 22-year-old male who sustained a skiing injury to his left ankle. The x-ray is shown here, and one notes a fracture running through the medial malleolus and a fracture running through the distal part of the fibula. Technically, this is called a bimalleolar fracture, though the lateral malleolar fracture is quite superiorly in the shaft of the fibula. This needs open reduction and internal fixation with plates and screws. We find that this has been fixed here with two malleolar screws running through the medial malleolus and a plate on the lateral side of the fibula with several screws running through the shaft of the fibula. Here we have normal x-rays of the foot. The image on this side is the lateral view of the foot which shows the tarsal bones, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. Note the longitudinal arch of the foot that is clearly seen in this film. This x-ray is an AP view of the foot which shows the first to fifth metatarsals and the associated phalanges. This is an oblique view of the foot which also shows the metatarsals and phalanges. Here we have a clinical case of an 18 year old female patient who sustained injury while performing ballet. Her right foot was injured and an x-ray taken of the right foot shows a fracture at the base of the fifth metatarsal. Thank you. This is the end of the module on radiological anatomy of the lower limb.